up to start. Chapter 7, Chapter 6 go along very nicely with each other. The formulas, you're just going to have to ask yourself in the beginning of the question, what formula do I need to use? Okay. So we're looking at sampling distributions here. So first you have a population distribution. That is a probability distribution of a population. And if we go all the way back to chapter one, population, all. So if you see that in the context of the question, then you're dealing with a population. Whereas a sample, sampling distribution is the probability distribution of a sample. Okay, so if it doesn't say all, then we're going to assume it's a sample, um, and that is X bar. All right, and then the vocab here, sampling error is the difference between the value of a sample statistic and the corresponding sampling error. Okay, so difference. between the value of a sample statistic and the corresponding sampling error. And the formula for it is X bar minus the mean. So sample minus population, really. Non-sampling error are errors that occur um, just basically when you're collecting your data. So errors that occur in collection, recording, and tabulation of data. All right, so for example, um, the test scores for all 10 students in a class are as follows. Population mean is. So it's telling you twice in the sentence that it's a population. I want you to start recognizing those things. So it says all 10 students. That tells you population. And then it also tells you with the word population. Okay, so remember the population mean mu is going to be the sum of x divided by the sample size. Or same way we find mean, okay? So add them all together, divide by how many? So here we would add these together. So I get 808. Which one here? Tab, yeah, tabulation. I'm sorry, I started writing cursive. And then the sample size is 10. So then 808 divided by 10. So 80.8. Okay, so the population mean is 80.8. So then we say, all right, now let's say I take a random sample 
of five of the scores from this population. So now it's a sample. What's the mean for the sample? It's still the same formula, except instead of mu, we write x bar. But it's still the sum of x divided by n. So find this mean, so 68 plus 72, 85, 90, and 100. So 415 divided by 5 this time, because there's only 5 values, you get 83. 415 divided by 5, 83. Okay, now that is the sample mean. This is the population mean. What's the sampling error? The sampling error is the sample mean minus the population mean. So 83 minus 80.8, which would give you 2.2. Okay, so it's always better to have a population. Okay, but if you can't get a population, then you have to deal with a sample, but notice that there will be some sort of error in your scoring. And it's very difficult to get data for an entire population, so most of the time we do have to um, settle for a sample. Okay, so then the next part here we have just some symbolism for you. Mean of x bar. Okay, that's very small, but it's mean of x bar. It's just the same thing as the mean. So this just says the that we can assume that the sample mean is equal to the population mean. Okay, so just write this here. Mean of a sample is equal to the mean of a population. And then the standard deviation of x bar, you have a new formula here. So you'll have to take the population standard deviation and then find the sample standard deviation. And to do that, you're going to do the population standard deviation, so sigma over the square root of the sample size. Okay, and you can do this as long as n divided by n is less than 0.5. So as long as the size of the sample divided by the size of the population is less than 0.5. You guys, it's just going to tell you to assume that in this case, okay, but that's just going forward. If you take a more advanced statistics class, you'll have to confirm those parameters, okay? So let's say your sample, you were only able to get 180 out of 200, 180 divided by 200, um, Nine. then you can move forward. I think this is the wrong way. So just, yeah, as long as it's greater than 0.05. There you go. As long as you have a good sample size, basically. And remember what we said in chapter two or three, Three, do you guys remember what the minimum sample size is for it to be considered a valid study? 30, yeah, 30. Okay, so, oh, it actually says that here. So the central, that is called the central limit theorem. And that says that a sample size greater than or equal to 30, the sampling distribution of the sample means within a population, blah, 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 is normal with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, regardless of the shape of the population distribution, 
it might be greatly skewed, but the sampling distribution will be approximately normal as long as the sample size is at least 30. So as long as you have a big enough sample, you can proceed. That's what that says. Okay, so as long as you have 30 or more in your sample, you can basically force it to a normal distribution and then continue with these formulas. Okay, if we're not able to get an entire population. And then I skip this vocab right here, standard error, the same as the sampling error. Okay, so you can put that right there, sample. All right, so just a quick example here. This is how it's going to work. So we have a random variable X has a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. Calculate the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution for the mean if we have a different sample size. Okay, so I wasn't able to get the entire population. We had to use a sample. So I want to find the mean and the standard deviation of the sample based on the data I'm given. So for a sample with a sample size of 40, the mean is still 50. Because as long as our sample size is greater than 30, the mean will stay the same. The mean of the population, mean of the sample, they will stay the same. The standard deviation, that's what changes. Okay, so the standard deviation is of X bar. So the standard deviation of your sample is the standard deviation of your population over the square root of your sample size. So in this example, the standard deviation is 10 of the population. My sample size is 40. So I have 10 over the square root of 40. So you can put that in your calculator as is, 10 divided by second square root, 40. 1.581 really changes the standard deviation. Okay, from 10 to 1.581, that's a huge jump, but I have a smaller sample size. As the sample size gets larger, okay, my standard deviation will change. So if my sample size is now 55, okay, the mean. Still 50. Mean is not changed. Standard deviation is changed. So now this is 10 over the square root of 55. Okay, so here I go 10 divided by square root 55. 1.348. Okay, so as you get closer, or sorry, your sample size gets larger, notice that the standard deviation is getting smaller. It's getting closer to that normal distribution with a mean of zero, a standard deviation of one. So it'll get closer to one as you have a larger sample size. All right, and um, I think we're going to stop there for today, just the beginning little User of chapter seven, we'll review this a little bit, but I just wanted to get the vocab out of the way. Um, we'll review this next class and then continue with the rest of chapter seven.